Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Out of Spec Guide. I'm Max, and you join me tonight with Dave Connor. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going, Max? Good to see you Go again. Good to see you again. You had a video recently on your channel, Out of Spec Dave, which people can check out, uh, where you and your uh, lovely wife, Kathy, talked about some EV 101 terminology, basics of you know breaking down some acronyms and complicated language we hear thrown about in the world of electric cars. Yeah, absolutely. That's some face I got there. Thank you for putting that up, Max. I appreciate I that. Um, let me play it a little bit for us. Uh, sorry, I don't go. mean to do you. Know, at least stop it on. Well, it's still, it's <laughs> never good, but go ahead. You can, this is why I always wear sunglasses in my video and people make fun of me for that. Uh, but anyhow, uh, turns out it's very sunny a lot of the time. Uh, but you and Kathy did a great job filming that video. People can check that out for a very in-depth uh, kind of analysis of a lot of these terms. Dave, I want to just go lightning round through a lot of this stuff. Let's begin EV. An EV is an electric vehicle. That's it. Electric vehicle. It's an acronym that stands for electric vehicle. Yep. There are different kinds of EVs. There are BEVs, which specifies that it's a full battery electric vehicle, has no gas component, no other kind of thing going on. It's just battery and motors. Uh, so, you know, Teslas are all BEVs, for instance. I have the Kia Nero here pulled up, Dave, though, because it has different versions. There's a Nero EV. There's a normal Nero, uh, which is a traditional hybrid. That, Dave, is called an HEV. And then there is a Nero plug-in hybrid, which is a PHEV. So at a basic level, it just levels a battery. BEV is the biggest battery. It's only electric. A PHEV is a medium-sized battery. It can actually drive as an electric car by itself, or it can drive on gas. And then an HEV is a full hybrid like Toyota Prius. Uh, it is typically a tiny battery. It can't really drive on electric alone. It's just uh, the you know least electrified version of the three of these. But those are different types of you know hybrids or full EVs. We've got yeah. right hybrid EV, PH or hybrid EV, PHEV, BEV. Right. Absolutely. And then, Dave, really important, everyone gets this, like a lot of people get this wrong that shouldn't, uh, kilowatt hours in kilowatts, you can see right here an illustration of a sticker on a popular electric car, it's a Polestar 2. Uh, Dave, that says 78 kilowatt hours and 335 kilowatts. Really quickly, like, what does that mean? Those yeah, I mean, numbers? like, if you've got a 20-gallon gas tank, 78 kilowatt hours is the size of the how much energy the battery can store. And 335 kilowatts is kind of like the horsepower in the car, how much power the car has. Exactly. So, right, kilowatt hours, the gallons of gas, or you see this on your energy bill stated, there's a price for kilowatt hours. You pay for this at chargers. It's energy, stored energy. Kilowatts, like you were saying, Dave, could be horsepower. It could be the speed of charging, but it's basically power, right? It's uh Higher power, higher kilowatts. Pretty yeah. simple. And, it, and it's such a simple concept, Max, but even some of the some of the best, you know, people out there that claim to be experts in electric vehicles get it wrong. And maybe it's a pet peeve of mine, but I think we could let's all try and talk the same language. Kilowatt hours is like gallons of gas. It's the amount of energy and kilowatts is the power. It's that simple. Absolutely. The next thing I want to talk about is regenerative braking, and this blends into a few other terms. Basically, Dave, regenerative braking at its most fundamental level in an electric car, right? It's where you have the motor slowing you down instead of your friction brakes, your brake pads like you're used to in a gas car. This slows you down and it charges the battery in an electric car back up. That's right. It's great. Um, yeah, when you're going down a big hill, you'll actually gain range or in stop and go traffic, as you accelerate and then decelerate, you'll get a lot more range out of a car than you would if you're just consuming energy directly from the battery pack the whole time. And the acronym for this, people call it Regen, right? That's kind of the short term for it. Yep, the short term for it. And there's a few other kind of qualifiers in here. Some EVs like Tesla will let you turn on a mode called creep, where they'll still do that slowing function, but at very low speeds, they'll roll forward, kind of simulating a, you know, automatic gas car for people who are used to that experience. Then there's a hold function. Uh, this would be what many people bandy about as a term one pedal, right? Where you're using the accelerator and when you lift off, the car slows and comes to a stop. So in effect, Dave, in traffic, you can just use regen to slow you down and stay held. And, uh, and in, in many ways, you know, use one pedal for a lot of situations. Yeah. And one of the real benefits of regen is it elongates the life of your friction brakes tremendously. So a lot less maintenance. I love regen. It takes a little bit of getting used to, 
But, um, you know, when you go and test drive an EV, give it a shot, turn off the creep, see what it's like to do regen with one pedal driving. And I think you'll like it. It takes a little while to get used to, but once you get it, it's like a little game when you're coming to a stop sign, you know, as soon as I, you know, you know how fast you're going, you know, how much, how much, when to, to, to actually take your foot off the accelerator and you can time it perfectly and come right to a stop. It's fun. It's a really fun game to play. And it ties into the next term I want to talk about, Dave, uh, because you can't use what we just talked about, regen, uh, when you have a high SOC. And Dave, what is a SOC or SOC? Yeah, so the state of charge, think of like your cell phone, you're at a 50% battery life left in the, in, the, in the charge. Electric vehicles, they have a big giant battery in them, and you'll be able to see what your state of charge is. Are you at a 20% state of charge? If the battery is completely full, it's at a hundred percent state of charge. If the battery is completely empty, it's at a zero percent state of charge. It's that simple. It really is. Uh, some vehicles display this, unfortunately, in miles instead of percent. You can always change this display. Most of them let you configure it. Uh, it's a pet peeve of mine because miles day, right, is a guess of the car, guessing how far it can go in that actual state of charge. But the state of charge or the percentage is the vehicle's best guess, like you were saying, just like on your phone, to its actual percent of battery. At those very high states of charge, when you have like 90, 95%, you actually have less regen because the vehicle can't, in effect, right, uh, it doesn't have battery left to fill up. And at very low states of charge, you obviously have to be worried about running out of range. You may have a, a turtle mode that comes on and your car slows down. So states of charge exist. There's a lot of science too about how to best charge and all that. We don't need to get too in depth, but basically if you hear the term SOC, SOC, it's just like the percentage of the battery left in the vehicle. Yep, absolutely. Ties in great, Dave, to my next term I want to talk about. Uh, State of Charge is also a YouTube channel. Our friend and colleague Tom Malagny, he reviews these things called EVSEs. Uh, EVSE, Dave, stands for Electric Vehicle Supply Equipment, but I think most normal people would call them something like chargers. Yeah. I mean, look, anything that you use to plug into your car, whether it's the connector or the, the electric vehicle cord, charging cable that comes with the car or maybe you buy it or if you buy a level two charger that you put on your wall that that tom reviews a lot of and you plug that into your car or even if you go to a supercharger or a dc fast charger that's putting energy at a really fast pace into your car all of that equipment all of that supply equipment is is evse I, I don't really use the term EVSE all that often, but it does encapsulate as a generic term all of what I just said, level one, level two, and DC fast charging. Yep, and uh, so that's EVSE, basically. You can just think of it as being a charger. Technically, let's group this as, as their own terms. It applies to AC charging, charging with alternating current. So like you said, Dave, could be a level two wall box or a thing that people put in their home to charge their car overnight, or it could even be what's called level one, which is like that wall connector. But basically, it's AC, alternating current energy from the, uh, uh, from the grid that goes into your car, and your car does the work technically because it has a charger on board of converting the AC to DC. If that confuses oh, okay. you, don't don't worry too much about it. It's very in depth. I mean, like we, I made a full video on this topic. But Dave, you mentioned DC fast chargers. When people are on road trips, these are really relevant. DC fast charging, like you were saying, with Tesla superchargers at Electrify America stalls, it's the fastest way to charge your car. It's direct current uh, that is going into your car. It's bypassing technically your car's onboard charger, and uh, yeah, these are DC fast chargers. They are. 30 minutes to an hour, sometimes even less, like 20 minutes, but basically, right, they're the closest analog in an EV to a gas station. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. And um, th this is, you know, a lot of people will call them um, fast chargers, but they're, you know, or so Tesla's brand of that is a supercharger. And each one of the companies or the charge point operators that that supply these these um, DC fast chargers out there. They they had call them different names and all that, but yeah, it's basically the fastest way to charge your car. Exactly, fastest way to charge your car and uh, super useful on road trips. Most of the time, though, EV owners we talk about this in our other videos, but the trickle charging, the AC charging on level one or two is honestly probably what people want to use most of the time, ideally, because uh, charging your car overnight, just like we mentioned, right with a 
battery percentage on your phone, Dave. It's also great to charge your car in your house like you do with your phone. Um, so AC and DC, those are those two terms. Uh, Dave, let's get into some battery stuff because nowadays a lot of, you know, we talk about Li-ion, li like lithium ion or LFP. And we don't have to get into chemistry or science or any of that today. I don't think either of us are too qualified to talk about it. But Dave, at a very basic level, what is li lithium ion? What is LFP? What do those terms mean for electric car batteries? I mean, to me right now on the market, there are, there are two types of batteries that electric vehicles come with. One is a lithium ion battery. Um, it's great. They, they charge up fast, um, but a lot of the manufacturers will recommend that you charge it only to about 80% consistently. You can charge it to 100% on occasion, especially if you're going on a road trip. But the LFP, the other, the other type of chemistry that's out there on the marketplace today, is um, there's a lot of benefits to the LFP and it's not really new, it's been around for a while, but my Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive has an LFP battery pack in it and the manufacturer Tesla says you can charge it to 100% pretty much every day if you want. Yeah, big difference basically being that uh, LFP are also found in lower cost vehicles. And like you said, Dave, have that benefit of you can charge them uh, fully and use their full range. Whereas with other vehicles, technically, they recommend you do it to 80%. It's due to differences in the battery chemistry. E the lithium ion is technically more advanced. It's more energy dense. It's more battery and less weight. But in the real world, Tesla has proven LFP is really practical in vehicles. So when you hear that term bandied about, that's what that means. The last term David want to talk about are uh, vehicle to X, let's just call it. There's vehicle to load, vehicle to home, vehicle to grid. Basically, Dave, this is just reversing the relationship we talked about earlier. You charge an EV, right, on AC or a DC. Well, with vehicle to something else, you take the, you know, the DC sitting in the vehicle's battery and you give it back to an appliance or your home or the entire grid. That's right. It's 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 an amazing um, concept. Um, my wife, Kathy, once made me toast um, at a park in her Genesis GV60 doing, doing vehicle to toaster. And, yeah. it was, and it was it was pretty good. Peanut butter and jelly as well. So. Yeah, that's vehicle to load where she, yeah. right, she basically with an adapter, you had that outlet that you could use in the, in the GV60, uh, just like a wall outlet. Vehicle to home day would be like what the Ford F-150 Lightning does, where you can use it as a backup generator of sorts for your home. Use the battery to uh, feed into your home's uh, an auxiliary panel or something. Um, those require installation and it's not standard yet, but it's exciting. Then there's vehicle to grid, which is the future, Dave, where EVs could actually help the grid because they're massive batteries that feed into it and uh, they can help you know, offset all load balancing and all these advanced things we don't need to talk about. But yeah, it's an area to watch. Keep your eye on this area. I think it's it's going to yeah. explode over the next few years. And, um, you know, I'm, I, it's pretty exciting. Yeah, it's very exciting. Relates a lot to energy storage. People in that industry are very excited about uh, excited about that. And if they want to learn more about it, um, then I think both of our channels will have videos about things like that. I put in as many info cards in this video as I can for the relevant terms that we do did talk about today, Dave. Uh, but Dave, I think that's a good kind of lightning round rundown of some of the most important acronyms and terms and just lingo that people should know with electric cars. Yeah, I mean, there's lots of other lingo. If you if you have a, a lingo, one that comes up, BMS, I hear that one, battery management system. If you have one, put it in the comments so everybody else can learn. We just tried to pick the ones that are the most, most often used. That's all. <laughs> Exactly. The ones you're most likely to see. Uh, and yeah, there's any, we could go fully in depth about this. And if people just, you know, uh, people can absolutely check out the video you and Kathy did because you included a little few more terms in there as well. Uh, but yeah. yeah, please leave the other ones in the comments that you think we should, um, that people should know as well. Other than that, Dave, man, I'm tired. I had coffee and I still feel like we just went through a lot of ground to cover. Um, it's, Maybe the caffeine's wearing off now. Thank you so much for joining me for this. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks again, Max. And uh, I look forward to another, another episode soon. Absolutely. Have a All good right. night. See you. Take care.